So I was browsing YouTube and I had came across a video of a gentleman riding a bike that you see in this video here and eventually it starts smoking and he's in so much of a denial he says that it is in fact not on fire, it is overheating. It's good, it's not on fire, it just overheated. So I figured I would shed a little bit of light on what is actually happening. Now what you see here, this is what you call thermal runaway. So let me explain what is happening inside of a battery pack. Inside of a battery pack, that's probably a bad example to show a 2650, but these are 18650s. And what they'll do is you have a couple different configurations. You have a thing called parallel, you have a thing called parallel series. So what they'll typically do is they'll do this. And they'll just keep doing this with batteries. And you have different versions of batteries. You have bin A or grade A, which is the best batteries that they have. And they'll typically sell those to bigger manufacturers. Let's say Sony would sell it to DeWalt or the, the, the Apple with their old school MacBooks. You get the idea. Obviously nothing really takes 18650s or 21700s. Again, the 21700, basically the first number is the diameter. So 21 is the first number around. And then the 70 is the the whole distance of it. So an 18650 is 18 round and then 65 millimeters long. Uh, same thing for a 2650. So what I want to do is I want to explain to you how they make these battery packs. Essentially inside these battery packs, they'll typically be done as power series, which is they'll have a bunch that are parallel, meaning that all the negatives connect together and then all the positives connect together. And then there'll be a circuitry at the end or they'll run through a battery management system and then you have ones that's parallel, then you have series that are run like this, where it's negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And that's just, that's a live connection at all times. And then you have power series, which they could do two like this, two like that, and two in the middle, and then they'll connect those. And that's essentially giving you the power and, and, and essentially the MAH as well. When you run in parallel, you're gonna find that you're not gonna get the most amount of volts out of it, but you're gonna get the longer battery life. When you run something in series, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have the most amount of power that you could get with minuscule amount of milliamp per hour or MAH or watt hours, no matter what, uh, parallel is gonna be best for longevity, series is gonna give you the amount of power that you wanna use. So now that you have these battery packs, you're probably wondering, how do I verify whether or not the battery pack that I have is real and it'll stop videos like this happening? Well, that's a good question. And the answer is fairly simple. Whenever you deal with a manufacturer, depending on how large the company is and how reputable it is, if they are reputable enough, that's not saying that companies don't do this, they're not reputable, but usually if a company has a name to stand on, and it's just not some no-name company, they'll probably get everything UL certified, and there'll be a little stamp on a sticker, and you're able to actually search the name of the company and that certification to see if it's tied to that exact company. Now, I myself have not seen any fake UL listed batteries, but I know that they do exist. You could essentially just print out a sticker and say it's from something else, when in reality, it's not the battery that's in your hands. At the same time, there's a couple things that you can avoid to stop having thermal runaway, even on batteries that are bin B batteries or bin C batteries. And a little bit about the bin B and bin C batteries, essentially what that means is you have the grade A, that's your best battery. We're gonna sell that to all the big companies, B, bin B and bin C, wow. Mm. Most manufacturers like Sony will just throw out, Sony actually doesn't make them anymore, Maruta does, but uh, whatever, Molly Cell, they don't like that battery, they just kind of throw that away, and then the Bin B, they'll sell to other companies. But this is not the best battery. This is probably the battery that they're using, or this one, or it could be a clone of either or. So you have these different batteries, and then what they'll do with these different batteries is they'll kind of slam them all into a pack, and then they'll say that this is a great battery. Again, if it is a big company, I wouldn't be too worried about the reputation of it because, well, their name is on the line. If something is UL certified, that kind of relinquishes a lot of the doubt of whether or not it is a good company. It's not so much about the company that is making it, it's more so about the batteries that they're using inside of it. And sometimes, more often than not, they'll even take batteries, e-bike companies, any company, 
could do this. They'll take a battery, they'll take the old wrap off of it. Let's just say it's a Sanyo 18650. Not a very good 18650, but let's just say it's a Sanyo. They'll rewrap it to make it look like Sony's. There was a point where people were taking Dewalt uh, battery packs out to get Sony VTC 3s and 4s. Well, we knew that those were their authentic and those were good batteries because you just couldn't find 18650s elsewhere. Look, there is a lot of information that I could give you about e-bike batteries and the types of batteries they're using, whether you're using a 21700, uh, they're not really using 2650s, but these are the two types of batteries you're going to see. You're going to really see 21700s and 18650s. 21s are better than 18s, they have higher capacity, higher amp hours that they can put out, and they're just running these. So I know that this can shock you what I'm about to tell you, but some things that can cause thermal runaway is temperature, you know, if they get too hot, not too cold, that won't cause it. Shock, uh, vibration, a short circuit, a bad charger, so chargers are key, water, there's a lot of different things that can cause thermal runaway. And if you actually experience thermal runaway itself, there's really not a whole lot you could do. Uh, the foam, fire hydrants work, you can use water, but the amount of water you're gonna use to need to cool that down, don't pull it over on the grass like this jackass did. And you know, call emergency services. Don't just start recording it. I know that um, our the way our brains work is we just wanna film things and show people how things are going down. It's probably in everybody's best interest, including the oncoming traffic and the people that are also concerned to call emergency services to fix that. If you're looking for the different types of UL certifications, you're gonna look for UL2849 and UL2272, and that's gonna kinda of give you a rundown of what the certification entails. Once again, I thank you for watching this video. If you can go ahead and leave a comment down below if you've ever experienced any type of thermal runaway or any questions in regards to batteries, and then like the video if you enjoyed this content and subscribe so you know if I ever have one explode or have thermal runaway, you'll be the first one to be notified of it. There's a button down below, go on and hit it.